Hi, I'm Dr. Chris Parker, and I'm going to be talking to you about the reliability of 3D body scanning. This is a presentation I gave at the 3D Body Tech 2017 conference in Montreal, and I'm delighted to present it here in a way which you can share, you can indulge with, and get the point over clearer. Now, I've got quite a few links to this presentation, and I've got all the work online, so I'm going to be giving everything in, in the description. So if you see a website, you see a QR code, just go to the description of this video and you'll see a lot more details. But um, it's worth taking a read the paper because I'm going to go over lots of details in a very low level to make it clear for everyone to understand. But if you really want to get a deep dive into the way I calculated these stats and the way I analysed it, where I compared it, the full paper, which you see here, gives the absolute best details. And if you want any further details, please get in touch with me via the email, again, linked at the bottom of this post, or just leave a comment. So I'm gonna start by giving you the answers of, is 3D body scanning suitably reliable? And the general answer is yes. So we see on the left here, we have um, a figure with lots of nine lines over. And this is, if you take these measurements on the left, you have a 99.73% chance that they are suitably reliable to make clothes out of. Now, as you see here, not all measurements on the human body have the same degree of liability for the body scanner, which is when the body scanner takes the measurements of your body, you don't have a set figure in that you don't say it is reliable, it's not reliable, it depends what you are doing. So the middle figure here, you see that if you're going to take the um, high neck collar, if you're going to take um, one of the bust measurements, some of the waist measurements, now as you see there, it's one of the high waist measurements, you can say that there's 95.46% chance that the measurement you take is suitable for garment construction. What is suitable for garment construction? I will show you in a few minutes, so hang along for that. But we see that if you had had 100 measurements, there may be four and a half of them, so maybe uh, you know, 10 in uh, 200 would be um, not quite reliable enough, giving you incorrect measurements. Then you go to the right picture here, and you see that 68% reliability on these measurements, which means if you took these measurements with a 3D body scanner, you will get a measurement which you can use to make clothes 68% of the time. So, 32% of the time, your measurements will be inaccurate to the point where you have to take a manual measurement. Now, I'm going to go into more details about this, so if you're interested, hang on. Um, but we're going to just dive a bit into um, you know, the key answers a bit further. So 3D body scanners do not have one reliability score. They have many. Um, so it's not a question of, is my body scanner reliable for the task I'm doing? It's is the measurement I'm taking with the scanner reliable for what I need it for? We need to determine how reliable we need it. So I've just phrased these measurements in garment construction terms, which we will talk about in a second, but these that's for making clothes. But if you are trying to make a very precise item, so you're making um, an engineering item for one individual, you might have tighter um, restrictions, which means that you have to be more conservative and the error goes down. But you need to understand how much error you can have for what you're making. The manufacturers of body scanners need to communicate the reliability of each measurement rather than just saying our scanner is good. And as users, as scientists, as designers, we need to critically consider, is the body scanner going to be reliable enough for what we need. Now, what does all this mean? You might be th sitting here going, hang on a second, I don't understand all of this, and what is reliability, what is accuracy, what is tolerance? Um, we'll cover that in a second. So let's just backtrack a bit further and go on to the problem. So what are we trying to solve for this research? Why is this important for you? Now, the global fashion industry is worth over $212 billion. It's absolutely phenomenal. And 3D body scanning promises to give a data-driven revolution to the fashion industry. We can have virtual tailoring, so you walk into a body scanner and out pops a suit or a dress, perfectly fitting your body. And this has been talked about for a long time, but it's not quite happening. And one of the keys is, is 3D body scanning reliable enough to be a tool we can use to make virtual tailoring happen? So 
in order to drive further integration of 3D body scanning in industry, the technology's reliability must be fully understood and communicated. At the moment, it is not. And after all, we've got to remember that everyone who uses a body scanner expects that the measurements you get out are as good as any expert. Every kind of professional tailor will give you as good um, measurements, a body scanner, if not the body scanner giving you better. That's what we expect. But how is this communicated? Well, this is SciStream, one of the leaders in the field, and we look at their performance parameters. And here we are, they say that they have circumferential accuracy of less than five millimeters, which means um, plus or minus, if you have measurement of say, I know, 30 centimeters, it's going to, the true measurement is gonna be 30 centimeters plus or minus five millimeters. So it could be, um, 35.5 centimetres either way. That's not actually the full story because that's tested on a cylinder, a static um, cylinder placed in the machine, not a human. And it's just assuming that we've got one measurement for the entire body, which as we've just shown is not actually true. So the way it's been communicated is not very good. Let's have a look at another one. So this is TT squared, another great leader in the field. And the way they're presenting it is saying that they have the best in class accuracy. Now that sounds very, very good and seductive, but it doesn't tell me anything. It doesn't tell me how accurate my machine's gonna be. Now, in both cases, if I know that the measurements I take must be within a millimeter accuracy, because I'm doing very advanced science work, then, well, the size stream might not be good enough, but then it's only giving me one measurement, it's not telling the full story, and TC squared isn't really telling me anything I can use. We look at um, presentations, so this is one from the uh, conference I was at, the 3D Body Tech, and um, Vitronic described their scanner, which is a very good scanner by the way, as perfect 3D and clinical tested precision. Again, it sounds great, but doesn't really tell us very much. Now, in a previous talk in the um, conference, only one um, uh, presentation, which was from IBV, talked about 3D body scanning as having different levels of reliability. And they showed a great animation of how people move in the scanner. And that movement is part of the discussion of why we have differences in measurements between scans. You get scanned three times, you cannot expect the same measurements um, every time, but how much variation will there be in the scanner? This is a conversation which needs to happen. So. The aim of this research is to establish a method of communicating reliability of 3D scanning technology. We need to provide a benchmark for allowable error and reliability, so that if you want to go scanning, you can turn to this paper and go, hey, this is what it is. And then we need to offer guidance on where 3D body scanning may be the best and least reliable. So this is really a stake in the ground saying, if you want to do reliability, this is the method that we're talking about. If you want to check the reliability scanner, we're giving you some benchmarks. So you can go, yep, it's probably good enough. Look at this paper that's proven it with stats. And then we're gonna say, right, where in the body are you likely to find the best and worst parts? Before going to this, I did promise a bit more explanation about the theory I'm using, about what's reliability, what's accuracy. So I'm gonna go and give you this now so you, before we go into the deep dive of the stats. So previous literature has talked about body scanning being comparable, but we don't actually know much about the variation in how we take manual measurements, which is if you have a tailor or two tailors in the room, they're gonna take measurements differently. How differently? We, 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 we can't quantify the difference between tailors um, in one place or one street or one country or internationally. So we don't know much about the reliability of manual methods. We assume they're great because tailors produce nice clothes on the runway, but we don't know much about it. 3D body scanning is referred to as being reliable in papers. Now these numbers here, you go to my journal paper, link to the bottom of this um, uh, video and you can look up what these numbers mean so that everything is fully referenced. Um, but they just say it's reliable, they don't really say it's um, reliable in this way or how it's reliable. They say that if you use body scanning there's less variation. Now that might be true but we haven't got a benchmark to compare it to because we've got manual measurements and it doesn't say how it varies over the body. As we've seen it does. 
Um, and then other research does give reliability figure, such as number 27 in the paper. They just give one number. It's not particularly great. Um, you can't use it, just like the size stream we just saw. Um, and then they say, well, it's comparable to manual methods. But again, we're looking at a bit of a um, rubber ruler here. It's not telling us anything we can quantifiably use on how reliable, why is it, what's the percentage of confidence we could have in this, which in engineering terms is incredibly important. Now, to understand everything, I'm going to have to give you three definitions. So, the first one is appropriateness. So, when measuring someone, are we taking the right measurement? Second one is accuracy, in that if there is a true value of height or true value of a waist circumference, how close are we to obtaining that? So if all our measurements are five millimeters greater, then um, you'd say our accuracy for the scanner is plus five millimeters. And then reliability is the third definition, which is what our talk here today is about, which is the confidence that variation of measurements um, are within the allowable error, which is when you take measurements 10 times, you might um, change within a, a centimetre, so plus minus 10 um, millimetres. Um, is that acceptable? Is your reliability good? Now, let's have a look at that term allowable error a bit further. So if we're designing a, a rod to go in a tube, so a little description on the side here, um, we want a rod to go in there. It can be you know, a bit larger than our intended um, size, it can be a bit smaller than our tennis size, but it must be within a certain limit. If a rod's too small, it won't work in our machine. If it's too big, it won't go into the pipe properly. So we have a thing called allowable error, which is saying it must be no more or no less than this amount. And this is standard in all manufacturing. Now, as far as talking about gun construction, so making clothes, we have guidelines on what the allowable error is for manual measurements. Now, I've put here, it's in a BS. BSI and Gordon et al. described them. A uh, link in the bottom of this paper where you can see all the measurements for allowable error guidelines. Um, and also it's linked in the uh, conf paper as well. Click QR code if you want to go further. But we have these guidelines and they range a lot from the shoulder circumference being plus or minus 22 millimeters to um, the inseam left measurement being 10 millimeters. If you're a tailor or um, anyone in guard technology, you'll recognize measurements. Um, but if you're not, just know that these are body measurements that we use to make clothes. So I said plus or minus um, 20 millimetres. Well, what does that actually mean? Well, we all know that data falls on a normal curve. So we have U, which is our mean measurement. So we take 10 measurements, our mean measurement will be whatever you know, everything is, the average. Then we got our standard deviation, which is how much the measurements vary from the norm. So we can say that plus or minus one standard deviation, 68% of all measurements would be in there, which is if we measure um, something 100 times, we can expect 68 of those measurements to fall within plus or minus whatever it is, one standard deviation. And if we increase this to three times standard deviation, then we are describing 99.7% of all measurements taken occur within this range, which is if you took 100 measurements, then... 0.3% would be wrong. It's not in the whole measurement. So you'd have to take two and a half thousand measurements to find nine measurements which are outside the allowable error, being too big to use for your purpose. So in engineering, three times standard deviation is a standard way to measure reliability because it gives you great confidence. You are as close to 100% confidence as you can be within reality. So you really want to use three times standard deviation. And that is what we're going to do. So how do we go and collect the data? Well, we had 27 participants and they went through a size stream 14 body scanner. Now I want to point out the size stream, I've got a size stream 21 body scanner, which is a more accurate body scanner, I've been told. I've not used it personally, but I've spoken to size stream and, and really, really nice guys. Um, but they told me that the technology is very comparable. So if you want to, if you, um, reproduce this data with size 21, I'd expect more measurements to be in that 99.73% um, reliability, but still you're gonna get the variation. Um, but this is gonna give you a really good benchmark that is very comparable. We took 90 body measurements, which are the standard output from a size stream body scanner, and we got the average standard deviation taken, and we analyzed data in SPSS 23. 
So we got every person's standard deviation, and then we calculated the average standard deviation for each measurement. And then we got average standard deviation for each measurement times three, which is three times um, SD, 99.73% average variance of measurement. Our sample was both male and female, so 15 male, 12 male, between the ages of 19 to 60, predominantly white. Now, one points out that we did do the stats on this, and height to weight ratio as a representation of body fat did not have a significant influence on the reliability of the measurements, which meant if somebody was anorexic, their reliability was going to be pretty much within the same range as someone who's obese. So the actual volume of the person being scanned due to body fat does not have an influence on the reliability of the body scanner as a measurement tool. This all resulted in 12,150 individual measurements. So lots of data we're playing with. What do we find? So less than half, which is 49% of measurements taken, were within the allowable error for manual measurement. Um, Garment construction. So, industry has no strict guidelines, um, so people may apply tighter um, allowable error, but the ones we've shown and linked below are very good and they are the best we have so far. So, reliability is not universal, it is measurement dependent as we've seen before and as we see here. So, you see that the most common measurements taken, which is on the left, are incredibly reliable. So we can say body scanning is suitably reliable for most applications, garment construction, cloth making, and scientific research. However, different measurements have different points. So you should really consider, if you're taking a measurement um, in the less accurate, sorry, less reliable band, can you take a different one, which is more reliable? If not, then you've got to maybe take a manual measurement. So let's take a deeper dive. So I'm not going to go into the absolute depth of um, measurements here, that's all given in the paper, but these are the measurements which have very high reliability. And what this means is, you see here, that we've got the back, neck to shoulder tape measure. Um, so I'm going forward a bit. Uh, that gives you a 99.73, so three times deviation, of within 2.26, so plus or minus, 2.26 millimeters. The allowance is four. So we are well under the allowable error. It's much more reliable than we actually need. Same way the um, over arm circumference, your allowance is 22 millimeters and you can get 99.73% of all measurements taken with a body scanner within 13.66 um, millimeters. So this, these tables are given in the paper, you can go into further depth, but this shows you how reliable each measurement is. So these are very reliable measurements and it's really good to see. Now when we go here, starts so dropping down here. Now what you see that quite a lot of measurements are the heights. Now the heights are not shown on the figures um, just for uh, communication purposes, but we see here that that's that. Then we go into here, these measurements, so actual mid-thigh circumference left and right, 68.26% um, reliability, which is you take a hundred measurements, then you're looking at about you no know, 30, 32 percent ish uh, of measurements are going to be too big. So the variation is too large for use in garment construction. Now, what's really important here is we've got actual mid thigh circumferences are missing. Uh, wrist circumference left is not too bad, uh, but the front hip. So the hip, we've got a waist and the thigh really, and arm length, really, really key measurements um, in tailoring and, you know what, bodybuilding. If you're using this to track your fitness, key measurements are going to be given wrong in that you cannot have enough trust in these to use them for garment construction purposes. 68.2% is generally not very good because the chance of you being wrong is just too high. Then we get into these uh, um, measurements, which is only a few of them. Sleeve length, which is quite an important one actually, has less than 68% reliability. So you might be, you know, half measurements taken might be completely wrong. So that's the story we're talking about. Um, lots of variation. So the outcome is many, body, many key measurements with three body scanning are suitably reliable for garment construction, but many are not. Manufacturers, scientists and engineers must consider a 3D body scanning having multiple reliabilities rather than single reliability. And so 
each measurement needs to be proved reliable. So if you're using the measurements that are listed in the first diagram, 99.73% reliability, you can go with it. I've given you a seal of approval. But if you're not using those ones, you need to really critically consider, are they good enough for what you're doing? Now this does contradict earlier research, um, which, you know, that's just how science works. Um, not all previous research is done with the greatest reliability. And you know what? Every paper until now saying that body scanning is reliability, therefore all my results are correct, you can to some degree start to question that because if they're using measurements with a low reliability scores, we've seen some of them, then the data they're basing their stats on is fundamentally flawed. If they're using measurements where it's 97% reliability, which is about half, that's great, carry on. So I'm not trying to say that everything's wrong. Science Stream T Squared make great products and you know, I've based my career on it. I absolutely love using them and I do use them, but critical consideration is needing. And when you read a paper or something saying it works, have a look at it and think, does it really? So we set out to establish a communication method, a method of communicating reliability. We've done that. We've told you how to do it. More details in the paper. Went out to provide benchmarks, label error, reliability. We've done that. They are given um, in the paper, read the tables, and they'll say these measurements are reliable to this amount, comparable to gunk structure purposes. And I've given you guidance on where three read bodies getting maybe the most and least reliable. Manufacturers need to start communicating the 99.73% confidence of the body measurements rather than giving you the single measurement of a tube in a scanner. Practitioners, so scientists, um, uh, tailors, need to work out what the allowable error they are allow can use for scanning needs to be before they start scanning. If they need super high precision, they want to go more than the ones they're given in the paper, then you've got to reinterpret the data. And given the tables in the paper, you can do that. But you need to work out what your allowable error is. And if you're a researcher, you need to start collecting multiple scans um, as part of your protocol. So you can work out the reliability of your scanner. If you're not using a size stream 14, then you can question these results. I welcome that. Do your own reliability and let me know about it in the comments below. Now, the limitations are we did only use size stream 14 scanner. However, um, we size stream 14 is a very very popular scanner it's very comparable to other ones and we are currently doing research with tc squared and we're going to post that online very shortly the technology though is very comparable if it's unlikely that you're going to get one scanner having this much variation and another scanner being 100 perfect all around so that is something you've got to think about it's limiting but we can live with it and the sample size is small, 27 participants, but did give us 12,150 measurements. Now, we have satisfied the stats requirements for the test, but we're going to be looking into large population samples very shortly, uh, considering further um, independent variables. So the future research, we're going to calculate the influence of the human body, because obviously the person moves around. We're going to work out how much of the error in reliability is due to the wobble of the person. Therefore, we're going to establish the limitations of how accurate a three-body scan can be. We're going to compare multiple scanners, so T-squared and SciStream. And we're going to partner with an industry. So if you are watching this and you're a manufacturer, you're a tech practitioner, get in touch and we will look forward to talking with you and doing research with you. My Twitter handle is UserGenDesign. It's down at the bottom there if you haven't seen it. Um, so come in, get involved and we'll help develop your product. Now before I go, I do have one more thing, which is that we're going to give away, or we have given away, a hundred free 3D body scans. So if you click on the link there, it's in the description below, or scan the QR codes, you've got a hundred cleaned body scans, which you can use and you can share the Creative Commons license. All we ask is that it reference back to us. So if you want to do more analysis, this is a really good way Use it for your research, use it for production, go for it. So thank you for your time. And if you've got a question, put it in the comments below. I look forward to hearing this. So have a great rest of the day and um, enjoy using 3D body scan to your research. It's more reliable, but be careful how you apply it.